So, uh, yes, I'd just like to say that um, I'm very touched to be invited because I think that this organisation is something really rather remarkable. So congratulations to both of the sisters and everybody else who's involved. So, hi. Um, yes, I, uh, I'm a Kundalini teacher and I'm a world record, or used to be world record holding freediver. So my deepest world record is exactly the same height as Big Ben. So if you can imagine going all the way down and then all the way back up again, that's uh, my deepest official dive. But what I'd like to show you is my deepest unofficial dive, which was not done under competition uh, conditions, um, which is why I'm unofficially the deepest woman in the world. <laughs> um, so I just invite you, the, the dive itself, we have a little bit of an intro while I'm breathing, so I invite you to breathe while I'm breathing. And then try holding your breath while I'm holding my breath. <laughs> and we'll see how everyone does. So if you could press play, that would be great. Thank you. So what I want to talk to you um, about today is um, from fear to freedom. And really how the only way that I was able to do these dives is not because I'm physically special in any way. And the comment I get mostly is, but you're so short. <laughs> um, which I am, I'm not quite five foot, so I don't have a huge lung volume. And, but what I do have which set me apart was my Kundalini Yoga, which is really one of the most powerful things I've found for developing the mind and working with the mind. Now, when, uh, when I came to freediving, I was already teaching Kundalini and I had my own personal practice for several years. And the thing that was quite um, surprising about what I did was that I went from being a complete to be complete beginner to having three world records in just nine months, which had never been done before and probably won't <laughs> happen again. And, um, and I also set three world records in three days, which has also not been done before. So a certain aspect was the naivety of the beginner, but <laughs> I was just like, well, you know, why wouldn't you? Um, but um, one thing that people mentioned when they were around me that I had this incredible mental focus, which for me was surprising because I just still considered myself a little bit of a ditzy blonde um, who was having fun in the water. And that was really how I went about my, my diving. But when I started hearing these comments about my mental focus and the yoga, I started, and really when I started teaching other people, I started to realize that there was a lot that was going on up here, which I took for granted because it was just part of my regular yoga practice, so it was part of my daily life. Um, but that other people didn't have access to those techniques, that wisdom, that knowledge. And so when I started teaching other freedivers, I could see that they were really getting stuck in their heads. And not only they couldn't fix the problem, they didn't actually know what the problem was because they thought it was technique is going to fix it rather than they needed to change the way that they were approaching what they were doing. So. Um, those of you who joined my session this morning, we tuned in with a mantra, Ong Namo Guru Dev Namo. And this mantra was really quite fundamental for me to connect with what I needed to connect with in order to do what I did. So this mantra um, means Ong is everything, the universe, and it refers to the vibration behind, the sound that is the vibration that uh, is the universe. We're all just particles vibrating. And so this, if you have the ability to tune in, this is the sound that it makes, on. And namo means I bow. So, on namo, I bow to the creative wisdom of the universe. Guru Dev namo, namo again, I bow to Guru Dev. Guru Dev is the teacher within me. But it's the wisdom that I already contain. So, initially, you may think, well, yeah, and how does that make you a great freediver? Don't really get it. So what I understood was that um, in our daily lives, when we are operating as human beings, we operate from a place of disconnect. So we are born, we manifest into a human body, and we, there's a sense of separation, a sense of not being part of all of the oneness, not being part of creation. And this is really underlined in so many aspects of our lives. We have this um, very intellectual approach to our lives. 
So if you look at the way that most of us have been brought up through our education systems, within our family systems, the um, importance is placed on how smart we are and then how much money we earn because of what job we get. And so our value systems are always supporting and reinforcing this belief that the internet is really what makes us strong as human beings. Um, and this is a fundamental point which we need to address in, when we practice a spiritual path, because yes, the intellect is one aspect, but it is not the key one. And <clears throat> when we free dive, there is this magic that occurs. Because when I dive, I'm not pushing myself at all. When I dive, it is a process of complete surrender. So what am I surrendering to? Now, in our daily lives, we go about, you know, we, we can go shopping and we can buy new cars, we can buy new clothing, we can go skiing, we can go scuba diving. We can do all of these amazing things because of our intellect. We have created technology which enables us to do really some most remarkable things. And this is a blessing. But we really want to get back to a place where we are reconnecting. So if you think about Ong, the universe, you might sort of have a, a vision in your mind of the night sky with stars and galaxies and planets and Milky Ways and stretching on forever, and then you'll suddenly go, oh my god, no, it's too much. <clears throat> and then you'll come back to Earth. So if we come back in a little bit closer to something that we can all really relate to, so planet Earth, half of it's in light, half of it's in darkness, and then you've got the sun and the moon. And so this is, you, you can see within this, our planet Earth, this wisdom, this creative wisdom of the universe, the play between day and night, the play between the seasons. This is going on forever. You never ever have to wake up and go, oh, is the sun going to rise today? Okay, in England sometimes you wonder if it has risen because it's so grey. I live in Egypt, so I always know when the sun's risen. So, but it's there. This pattern, this rhythm within the universe, we rely on it. We don't question it, it's there. Yeah? When we bring our focus in even tighter, and we look at all of the living beings on the planet, we see that they also have this inbuilt rhythm. The flowers on the trees wake up in the morning. The birds start tweeting. On a seasonal level, animals go into hibernation and they come out of hibernation. They have their mating seasons, they have their um, migratory seasons. So every single living being on this planet is directly plugged into this wisdom. They don't question it. They don't think, mm, I don't feel like getting out of bed this morning. The sun's up and they're off. Yeah? Actually, I don't like you. I don't feel like mating this season. They're like, yeah, it's mating season. Come on, let's go. <laughs> okay? So they're not stuck in their heads or their egos or their insecurities. Nature is just getting on with being nature. But we as human beings have the unique blessing and curse of intellect and ego. And this is where we fall down. But when we start to look at free diving, we, um, we realize that there's something deeper going on. And it's working, fabulous, thank you. So when, uh, what I want to do is, before we go to the video, is to just talk you through this little spark of magic. Because um, we are connected. We think we're not, but we are. So all of us have just now had a fabulous lunch. And what is happening? You're not thinking it, but your stomach is busy digesting. Yeah? Your body recognizes what nutrients it has just received, and it is releasing the right enzymes and the right chemicals in order to process your lunch. And within one hour, your stomach should be empty, and all of those particles will be starting to be absorbed into your bloodstream and delivering energy. You might have a little post-lunch dip in your energy. Um, <clears throat> but your body's doing it, yeah? The last time you went to the bathroom, that wasn't an intellectual process, <laughs> yeah? The hormones, they're happening right now as well. 
your nervous system, you're hearing me. You're not having to concentrate every little sound, what does it mean, and add it all together. Your nervous system is doing this automatically. So, and this is the wisdom of the universe at work within each one of us. If you want proof that you belong, just close your eyes, look inside your body, at what your body is doing right now, because it's not your smartness that enables you to do this. Yeah? Clever people do not digest their lunch better than stupid people. <laughs> okay? So, and this is we have another system. So the digestive system, the nervous system, the endocrine system, blah, 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 blah. We have a thing called the mammalian dive response. Okay? So some of, if some of you are scuba divers, you may know a little bit about this. But this is another system which is within our DNA and that when we put our face in water, so if I were to give each of you a bowl of water now and ask you to stick your face into it, your mammalian dive response would kick in. That wisdom is already within you. Every single cell within your body knows what to do. Obviously when you start training free diving it becomes stronger and more activated but each one of us contains that wisdom already. So <clears throat> it starts because we have these little nerve endings in our cheeks and above our eyebrows. Okay? You don't know they're there, but they are. So when I put my face in water, if these nerve endings are sensing water, it means that my airways must also be submerged. So messages go to my brain saying, stop breathing. She stopped breathing, we need to conserve oxygen. We don't know how long she's going to be here for. Okay? So the first thing that happens is my heart rate starts to drop. Okay? And if you were to do this at home, you can check your pulse, your heart rate will begin to go down. Okay? So that's stage one. If I'm still there, it's going, okay, here she goes again, so it's going to be a long one. The next thing that happens is we have this organ, hopefully all of you still have yours, called a spleen. Okay? For a long, long time, spleen, what does it do? We don't need it, take it out. A little bit like the appendix. It's actually a storage organ. It sits here on the left side, just beneath your diaphragm. It stores oxygenated blood. So then when you hold your breath a little bit longer, again, your, your system, the wisdom of your system is constantly measuring the oxygen levels in your blood. It sends another message to the brain going, we need a bit more oxygen. The spleen contracts and you get a nice shot of oxygenated blood into the bloodstream, which goes to your brain and your heart and your lungs, your vital organs. All this time, the blood vessels in your arms and your legs are constricting to push the blood to your vital organs. <coughs> and the longer you go, the deeper you go, you also have physiological changes in, in your lungs. This happens not because I will it to happen. This happens because I acknowledge that it's there, that it is a God-given part of me, and I trust it. I trust that my body and the ocean know each other. They know each other in this lifetime because I've trained, but they know each other already. Because from evolution, there is a memory, a residual memory within our cells, not just mine, but within every one of your cells, is a residual memory that knows how to survive in water. So, we're going to move on to the video now then. Okay. <coughs> 60 to 80 seconds. An average human being can hold that breath. <coughs> so this is where I live in Egypt. This is the blue hole in uh, Daha. And so I encourage you all to breathe deeply, long deep breaths into your belly, and to relax. Relaxation, trust. This system is in your body as much as in my body. And we're just going to go on a journey to 104 meters. And off we go.
One minute. Anyone still holding?